the slide talks to us about what is happening in our different sector, okay? What we think about what COVID has done is basically put us into a red category, an uh, amber category, or a green category. Now, some people in the red might just be there for temporary and then they will move into maybe green. Some people in green might swap. We don't, um, you know, it just depends on where you are. And also it depends on the region you are, the country you are. So the first thing that we need to do when we talk about changing strategy is really have you truly identified your crisis? Because someone in the, the airline or aviation crisis will be completely different from someone in the financial sector. So the first thing to know is, am I a loser, potential loser, potential winner, winner? am I in between, where am I? Because this would, then, this would then inform you how you move forward in your either, am I on life support, am I about to die? Am I about to go into a situation of coming out of life support? Or am I just living the life in, in just that endless opportunity out there for me? So those, those things will determine what strategy you pick. Next slide. Now this one I put out here because working from home really, it's not a newbie because for centuries, people have worked from home. If you look at the, the evolution of, of our working habits, it came from you know, uh, working from home goldsmith, um, you know, restaurant, cooking food, doing different uh, pr um, production was home. And as we moved into the industrialization, we went into factories, big machines, offices, we went into those, then technology happened, then we went into the, the, the whole uh, downtown situation, big home uh, offices downtown and spaces. And then the internet came around the 1980s and we moved into cubicles. And then from cubicles, we moved into wide open spaces so we could you know, do our, our innovation and collaboration and so forth and so on. So the whole concept of work Um, one of my career roles in IBM was working across geographics, um, especially in the emerging markets. And, and, and in the 90s, IBM moved, and I'll talk to that a little bit uh, more, moved into basically uh, remote working, work from home situation. This slide is a little fun slide. I just wanted to show how some of our dads are coping with the COVID-19, how they're trying to get the kids in check. Um, I know everybody know that video to the far, to the far uh, right of the screen of that gentleman that was giving his last uh, live interview and his wife trying to drag the baby out of the room and you see other pictures, but I know that COVID-19 has thrown us for the loop and there's a lot of us out there um, trying to figure it out, uh, not only in the office space, but also definitely at home. Um, so we're moving to the next slide. And I think uh, Deji has said to me that there, there will be questioning, uh, questions coming through. So if you have a question while I'm speaking and it's a burning question, please put it, drop it in the question, um, uh, the Q&A box and, and I'll be happy to answer as we go through. Now, consideration. What are some of the things that we need to think about when we, when we are looking at even move, either moving our entire workforce to remote or somewhat a high, hybrid or bringing them back from COVID-19? Um, remember, we all are in a very unusual situation. This is not normal. Um, People are calling it the new normal. I say it is not normal. What it is, is that we are now going to be able to come in a situation where we have to adapt to some new uh, behavior that, that the marketplace has presented itself 
those of us that felt like we had to be in the office to see all of our employees, to know that they're working, maybe that's not necessary anymore. Those meetings that we have to jump on the airplane to fly all the way to you know, Abuja, just to see someone for 10 minutes, maybe that will not be necessary anymore. But for the, for the whole part, we are all going to have to figure out how we get back to, um, to kind of regular um, lives and working. So when we move to the next slide, what we'll find is that I just put some questions out there that I had to ask myself uh, prior you know, to COVID. So I started doing this work from home thing for 20 years. So, you know, when, when we were doing dial-up, you know, there was no technology, you know, like we have today, we were doing dial-up. You had to have two different uh, telephone lines coming into your office space to be able to use one for internet and one for voice and so forth and so on. Those things are not happening anymore. Uh, so these are questions that I put out here so we can kind of think through this. And it's great to see that we have a lot of leaders, uh, business leaders, and especially entrepreneurs on the call. Some of the things you need to start to ask yourself is, why am I thinking about taking my workforce remote? And what do I hope to achieve? Right? Is it only because of COVID-19? Am I doing this because it's customer driven? Is it market driven? Because if everybody else in my sector is now pivoting and they are moving into areas of a business model that requires that, maybe. Is it because I want to increase productivity? Is it a mixture of all of these things? Is it because I want to widen my, my, my uh, talent pool? Because sometimes if you are remote, your workers can come from anywhere. Doesn't necessarily have to be sitting in a location where, a geolocation where you are. And then how do I achieve what, that's what, if you will. You know, how does it impact my customers? Because at the end of the day, you're in business to make money. So if I'm gonna make some changes, how does that have, uh, impact my customers? Do I know my workforce in the first place when I talk about remote? Because sometimes we talk about work from home and people are saying work from home, but do you know that sometimes your employees might not have a home to work from? This is Nigeria, this is Africa we're talking about. What are the KPIs? Do, do, I, have, do, I, have, do I have the right KPIs in place to, to manage and this will motivate and, and incentivize my workforce, you know? Who should be going? Is it my entire office? Are there functions in my, in my organization that could be remote in some in the office space? Is it full-time, is it flat? So there's a lot. Also, do I even have the infrastructure in place to make this happen? Is there a governance process of culture in my organization that, that really lends itself to uh, uh, um, transparency, right? So those are some of the questions that you have to ask yourself. Now we'll go into another survey, um, another poll that we will we'll pull right now. DJ, are you ready? Yes, Hello? share. Okay. Yeah, good. share the poll. Okay, so let's let's go to our next poll. Okay, so what are the greatest challenges working from home in the COVID period, 19 period? What are some of you, what, what are, if you were to, is it internet, is it power, is it your workspace, is it compensation, what is it? So we'll give it a, another, what, 30 seconds, Deji? I have about 77% now. So let's see another 30 seconds. Okay. Um, we'll be there. OK, 
Okay, I think I think we're good. We're good. Good. Yes. So. All right. So, what's our results? Power. Oh. <laughs> Power internet, of course. I mean, I, I, I can tell you guys now, in my household, uh, between my husband and I, we have Airtel, we've got Smile, we've got um, IPMX, we have Spectronet, we've got a backup with, um, with uh, MTN. So, <laughs> so you, you, just, you just have to have internet. I mean, that's, that's kind of, and you have to have power. So I'm not surprised. Okay, good. Now, any questions so far before we move on? Um, please, if you have questions, you can drop questions in the chat box. Um, okay, somebody's saying I have more than one response to the last questions. My other <laughs> responses are power and workspace. <laughs> okay, I think when we get okay, to Q and A, we'll take some of these things. Okay. Yes, yes, we will. Um, so, so now we've had some questions to consider. So while you're considering those, let me just share with you my experience, uh, both as an employee and trying to build a culture for remote working. So we'll go to the next slide, Deji. Okay. Now, my two corporate roles roles were in uh, IBM and Microsoft. My two entrepreneur slash turnaround kind of situation was in SSL and in Y Group. Y Group Holding is the company that I started uh, about 10 years ago, but just actively became um, working with it. It is uh, of, you know, four, four different um, um, business focus payment systems around um, professional services, looking at IT infrastructure as a service, and then also project funding or project financing, if you will. So if we just go to the next one, I'll just put some highlights in here and then I will, I will speak to them. So the next slide tells you my timing and uh, around how I've, I, I have worked in my experience. So in IBM, 100% work from home. Now, work from home, I use it interchangeable with remote working because work from home for me 100% was my office setup. So first of all, when I got into IBM, uh, I worked a, a year and, and then I was, at, I was you know, fortunate to get into the space where I really didn't need to be in an office. I was a, a rep covering LA Unified School District, but I lived in Atlanta, Georgia. There was no necess necessity for me to be in an office in Atlanta, uh, but all of my work needs were provided by the company. So my setup, my home office, uh, from lines being put in to the desk, to the chair, to making sure that I had uh, credit for my electricity I was using in my house. Um, I had the, the printer, the, the scanner, at the time we had fax machines, so I had a fax machine. Um, I had the stapler, the, the paper, anything to do with work that I needed outside uh, in, my, in my office if I was in a typical work environment was provided to me by IBM, including an expense um, credit card or charge card with, with American Express that I could have spent up to a certain amount before I, I, I was and then asked for an approval by, uh, from my manager to go uh, more and spend more on that particular uh, card. It was, um, it was all set up. So it, finance was not my problem. Uh, comfort in my house was not my problem. My focus was work. Uh, as if I would get up in the morning, get dressed, and go to an office space. So everything provided. I was an inter individual uh, contributor for six years in that role, and then I moved to managing people and cross-managing 
So what that means is that not only was I managing just my immediate reports, I was also managing resources across different geos because I was responsible for the go-to-market strategy for, for, um, for the SOA brand, including the enablement. So I was also responsible for all of the training across the different geos and, and events that will bring customers in in our uh, technical people together as well. So 100% of that job was done from house. And what my manager and IBM could not afford is that I was worried about internet or electricity or anything else because there was a lot I was, I was managing and I was doing. Um, what they also did was there was a major training around this because they needed me to have a good work-life balance so I don't lose it. And so what happened was every six weeks I had to um, go into an office space, plug in my computer. I mean, back in the day, we, we, everything didn't just come from the cloud like that. You had to be connected to a VPN um, and be able to get all of your updates and your patches and so forth and so on. And so that allowed me to mingle a little bit when I was in the office space in, 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 a, in a dedicated space spot that I, I usually will go to, which was not too far from my house, about 10 minutes. And even that drive, my miles were paid for by the, by the company. So every time I used my car for anything, I wrote down my miles and those miles were credited by, um, um, returned to me by credit from, from the company. In my job in, in uh, Microsoft was a little different. I was brought from the U.S. to the continent, so everything about my move was the companies, but I had a station, which was Lagos, Nigeria. Now, 90% of the time I was away from station because I had to be engaging with all of the customer, uh, the partner channels across the West Central East Africa uh, region. So I was constantly in different offices and most times in my partner offices across the continent. And that basically defined my remote working because it didn't have a specific location. And that also had to be um, completely taken care of by the company. So I wasn't worried about, uh, oh, I'm going to get into a country and I don't have a SIM card or I'm going to get into the country. I don't have connectivity or um, the hotel I'm going to live in didn't have the right facility to, to enable me to do work if I needed to print or sign something and scan it. So no matter where I was, the, the company was constantly making sure my accommodations were available, that it would give me all of the necessities I needed for work and for my own comfort. The security was there and I was, I was always with the right uh, tools. So my phone, my laptop, whatever tools I'd ha I needed was available for me. And if I was to get into a country and something were to go wrong with a laptop, the nearest Microsoft uh, office was there for me to get a new one configured immediately for me to start work. So none of my work downtime uh, came from the lack of support from, from the company because they had, they had thought through all of that. And one of the things that also was uh, incredible about this was that Microsoft Africa was um, new in getting into some countries. So even some of our, uh, some of my colleagues never ever went to an office. They stayed working in hotel lobbies or visiting the customers. So that was completely 100% remote as well. Now, those were things that I didn't have to worry about and it was brilliant because I would just, you know, send my schedule and someone would book my flights and I'll fly off to where I wanted to go and I'll get there and everything was prepared for me. Now, fast forward. And I'm now in, on the other side of the, of, the, of the road, which I think most of our entrepreneurs and uh, C-level people would, would kind of appreciate. 2010, coming from that, those roles 
and, and spending all of those um, hours on the road, I knew for sure that I could not just be sitting in an office because it wasn't productive, especially for knowledge-based companies. People that need to be with their clients, people that need to be making sure that they are helping customers. You can't just be sitting in an office. You gotta be with your clients. You gotta be understanding what's happening with your clients so you can fix the problem. So when I got into SSL, we had huge, huge complex complexity that was so unnecessary. One of the great things about understanding your strategy is that you don't complex, you don't make it complicated, you simplify it. So the first thing was the how do we boil all this complication to simplify it so we are we are better in responding and dealing with our customers. Cutting costs was important because the revenue needed to go up. So the first thing that drove my strategy was how do I get customer satisfaction up so I can ask them to pay me more money? Okay, basic. How do I get customer satisfaction up so my cost to them is not high or they don't feel as high because they're getting the premium um, kind of services? Mm -hmm. So we had to scrub and clean and do a lot of things. But one of the things that were very clear was how do we change the culture to improve employees' uh, productivity, retention, and full adoption of technology for, and, and also continuous training? How do we do this in a way where the where the this employee felt more accountable, responsible, and they now could go out there with all the right tools to be a remote worker? to know that they don't have to come back all the way to the mainland, get in a pool car to go back to where they came from in Ikeja, right? So that time, saving that time. Now, how do you make sure that happened where they're not calling you while they're doing that to tell you that, oh, the, the data plan just ran out or, or you know, the, the, the phone, they can't make a call because they don't have enough minutes. So it was very important that we understood that. One of the added value that came out of that was the, the cost effectiveness and loyalty. Because we were doing something where most of our IT uh, uh, firm were not doing. We were offering flexibility, something that most IT firms were not offering their employees. And we were offering it because we had a vision that a mission and a vision that we wanted to create a workforce that was so dynamic and that they were so they were actually at the the higher level when it came to delivering services to our customers again this was all driven by increasing our revenue uh, one of the things that we had a uh, model that came out of our our session and, and this is what we live by was being open honest and responsible respectful in our communications at all time, internally and outside, so it didn't matter. This also empowered the, 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 the employees. Not only were they out there, but they felt like they were not on their own because if they made a decision following those clear guidelines, they knew that they had the support of upper management. In Y Group, what I have done now is we are completely remote. We have no offices. We only go to our client's site. We work and stay in their space until we've done our jobs. So we don't have an overhead. I work from home and the rest of my team remote. And that remote is driven by the widening of the pool. So the strategy on there was Y Group needs skill sets that are not located in one geo so how do we make sure we get the best of the best of our clients is by making sure we have a remote pool of talent who can pull from no matter where they are in the world or on the continent to that customer so we get the premium pricing that we need okay move next slide please now um some of my success um, key success factor that I put up here. And then you see on the side of the, less, the less, left side of the screen, I 
put some images there just to show you a, get an, you know, concept of, of how you drive this in your environment. You need to understand the right people in your organization. You need, you need to have the right psychic around them. The first thing I did when I came into, into when I went into SSL was I hired three important uh, function people, HR. And talent management is what I called it. HR was important because I needed the right people in the right seat on the bus. And it was important for the, the, the level of the person that I hired to be a partner with me. So it was not an admin job. It was an HR talent management job to change a culture to give us the results that we needed. The next was a CTO that came in that worked along with the COO. And we, we created structures, policies that were very clear Everybody knew what they were doing. So whether you were in the office or away from the office, you knew exactly what was happening and everybody was uniformed. We also had finance. It was very important because we needed to also understand the structuring. So when HR tell me that we should pay commission, finance needs to make sure that that is in compliance for what we're trying to do for the bottom line and the upline. My CTO, my COO needed to understand that their products and the services were in line to make sure that we, we achieve our, our KPIs. So we had a task team, what we call the leadership team. And that leadership team grew as we mentor most of our, our under uh, studies. Now, one of the things, uh, can you go back real quick? Okay, so one of the things that before I, I shut up, I would like to share is that you as a leader, you also have to inspire your team. And you need to find that thing once you understand your team. One of the things that we did in SSL, we had a family day. That family day informed us, it gave us a lot of data about what's, what, what was happening behind the scene with our employees and how we needed to structure, how we will then in, incentivize them. And one thing that I understood very clear was that my team at the time had an attitude problem. They had the ability to do everything that we wanted to do, but we just did not have the right attitude. We had the wrong attitude. And so we needed to do something. So I did some research and I came up with, uh, you know, I, I had re read about uh, uh, Charles before and, and um, Swan Doll before, and I went back to it and it made sense. And this became something that was very, very strategic. And I'll read it real quick. The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than successes than what other people think or say or do. It is more important than appearances. It is more important uh, uh, giftness, uh, giftedness or skill. It will make or break a company, a church or a home. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that the people will act, that people will act a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the one string we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitudes. So thank you very much. I'm gonna stop here and we're gonna to go to a quick survey again and we will move into pitfalls. Any questions so far, Deji? Um, no, no, I mean, people are dropping comments, um, but we'll take that at the end of okay. the presentation. All right, do we have one more poll or are we done? Yeah, we do, we have two more. 
Okay, so let's run that real quick before I go into the pitfalls. So the next four is what do you consider the greatest benefit of working from home? Little or no commute time, increased productivity, work-life balance. Okay. How are we doing? Yeah, we're doing another. Yeah, okay, about good. about about seventy six percent, eighty people are responding. Um, okay. I think right about a minute we will um. We'll close it. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um. Okay. Ninety eight percent. Mm. All right. Okay, we'll so I'm it. ending the poll now. Yes, end it. Okay. So, why work life balance, increased productivity? So, productivity is not really increasing. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Work life balance, beautiful. Okay, good. This is great because, see, we have. I have a, a story to share. In my career with IBM, I loved the fact that we had this work from home or remote working. It was beautiful. Now, what I did not understand is that as an employee, I didn't understand this, the strategy, right? The strategy behind this was Lou Grashner deciding that IBM was so stressed and they needed to consolidate and IBM had purchased all of the office buildings that they were, they were, um, the employees were working. When I joined IBM, IBM were, uh, had 320,000 employees across the world. Okay. All of the buildings they own. So what he decided was, Hmm, what's the best way to get shareholders, um, you know, value up and how can we cut costs? Let's get rid of these buildings. Let's make our, we are a technology company. So let's, let's make our workforce remote. And so they did. Now, what they didn't understand at the time was that they were not focusing also on productivity. What they were looking at was just cost, which they did phenomenal with. But at the end of the day, productivity was sacrificed. Okay. Uh, this slide just, just show you some of the pitfalls. Be very strategic or what is it that's driving you to take your workforce to remote? And realize that if you don't have a structure, a solid structure behind your strategy to enable that, you will fail. The other part is also understand that the strategy behind this has a lot to do with communication and reporting and, and constant day-to-day -day interaction. We have people that are being burned out even now that, is, that we're seeing work-life balance is, is working for most people on this survey. If you ask the same, uh, folks one, year, uh, one month or two months from now, they'll be burned out. Why? There are no structures. People answer instantly on calls. They don't go to sleep. They're working till two in the morning. You've got people uh, waking up and just throwing them in, in, into the living room and sitting there in the, in the wrong position for hours, um, too close, they don't have the right glasses on. And sooner or later, you start having health issues with your workforce because they're not properly trained or, or suited for uh, work home. People laying in bed and for two or three hours on the computer, that's not gonna work. People have no set schedule for returning calls. As the calls come in, you're picking it up. You're doing all the email at the same time. Sooner or later, you feel like you're not actually doing anything to completion. You start to get burned out. So it's very important that structures are put in place. And people in the organization know those structures and respect those structures and understand that there will be exceptions, but not the rule all the time. Are you ready? as business owners to give authority, let go of authority, to be able to say responsibility across the, the organization, accountability across the openness, 
regular cadence. One of the things we did in, in SSL was every uh, employee that had a manager had at least one face-to-face, one-on-one with their, with their manager every quarter. Because at the end of the year, we don't need to decide who was performing because we now forgotten to January. Every quarter we knew what employee was doing, what and who needed improvement and what kind of improvement it needed to make sure they were successful by the end of the year. Now, if you leave your candidates to the end of the year to decide performance, you've forgotten all the great things that that person have done. What if the person did something foolish uh, de- the de- December 18th, that's what you're going to remember. But they've been working the butt off since the beginning of the year. So it's very important that you understand those structures. Um, so the next slide we'll go to. Um, it's just the types of remote working. Okay. And I want to just understand these different types. They're not all the same. Flex hours means that I am giving my employees the opportunity to work longer hours for four days and have the opportunity every week to have one day work from home or one day off or one day with limited or part-time hours. That's flex time. Now, flex time starts in the beginning of your strategy which give you the muscle to understand whether or not your workforce is mature enough to move to more work from home or away. You go into the part-time working remote. Part-time working remote meaning that I can work two days from home and then I'm in the office for three days or four days. Hot desk is another one. Hot desk and, and all these format that I'm talking about, it all depends on where you are in the industries that you're working. Hot desk is simple. I do a lot of hot desk because uh, we had an office space that we were growing out of and busting at the rim. And most of us, the staff that were supporting or were cross across uh, multiple functions, we really didn't have to be in the office but we had to come in for meetings, for example, that we wanted to do uh, some uh, 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 coordinations. And I used to have a hot desk. I was the CEO. I didn't need to have an office. So I I gave my office away to the sales team and I'll come in those days that I needed to be. And I'll I'll hot desk. I would sit there. I would leave nothing. I'll pack all my stuff up when I'm done and I'll go. And the next person that comes in will use that desk. When they're done, they'll go. So you just call it hot desk. Then we have things that are popping up now called the satellite offices. Now, these are people that are coming from long distance to central offices, whereas their customers or whoever they're serving are closer to them where they live. So take a poll, understand where are these people, and then put a satellite office where they can be coming instead of two hours one way, two hours uh, uh, the other way, they probably have about 30 minutes to that particular satellite office. The joy about satellite office is that it increases the productivity time for your employees and also give them work-life balance. And it's also costless for you because now you don't have to have bigger offices in Equity or VI. Work from home. You can move into work from home fully like I did in IBM working from home because my customers and what I needed to do were not central to where I was. So there was no big deal for me to go. And it's even cheaper for companies if they can, if they understand and have the right resource for work from home. Last but not the least is your remote workforce, which I have today. I don't care where you are, but when the customer calls, guess who's going to be there? You are. So it gives you a bigger pool of people to pull from. It gives them all the flexibility they need, but you're also having the uh, the, um, the revenue that you can pull from them. So those are the differences between those um, different terms when we use them. Now we have the last survey or the last poll. We're going to poll and then we're going to open up for Q&A. Okay, the poll is up. Okay, so which of the following models 
uh, best suits your work style. And again, I explain it just so you have an idea of what it is. And you know, you, you might think that one, two, three, a mixture of it, but just the best one right now, which one will, will, will fit you? How are we doing, Deji? The responses are coming, about 45% now. Okay. So we give it about 30 seconds and we can close it. Okay. Um, so maybe another, I have like um, 15 more seconds to go. Are we past 70 yet? Um, we're almost, we're 62. Um, the responses are coming. It seems people are taking time to think about what exactly works for them. What the, <laughs> I understand. So, Especially when you have only one option. And then, I mean, considering the diverse audience. Okay, so I think I need to end the poll now. We're about 66%, um, but I'll okay. end it. Okay. All right. Uh, That's our results. Okay. So here are the results. Okay. Um, so here are the results. Flex hours. Okay. Flex hours. Good. I'm not surprised because, you know, we are, we are in the place where COVID-19 centers all running home, right? Fair. We didn't have a choice. Now, we can, we, we as Africans, we can do short term, uh, you know, height hurting. We can, we can suck it in. But for a long time, it gets a lot. So flex time might be something that a lot of employers might want to look at. Because when you start to say work from home, it means a lot of things, utilities. I mean, sometimes somebody ain't got no home to work from. You know, some people are just squatting. The, I mean, some of your lower level staff people might be just coming into Lagos, hanging out with someone, going back to where they're originally living just to be able to go to work. So we also have to be very, you know, um, we, we have to be smart about how we think about this work from home. Yes, COVID had brought it to light. Yes, we need to do something about it. Yes, we have to digitize and move forward, but do it with a strategy that will be sustainable and not break your, your uh, employee, your, your workforce or even your business. All right. Okay. So let me go. I have two more slides and then I'm done. I'll shut up. So the, the next slide that I'm going to talk about um, is for people that have already started. I know some of us already started. We're like, we're on this train. It's not, we're, not, we're not going to miss it. We're on it. Great. What next? You need to, you need to understand your, your customer engagement model. How is this going to work? Because you, can't, you cannot move to a remote situation and, and lose your customers. That's, not, that's, a, that's just going to de defeat the whole purpose. Employee. What is your employee management model, uh, engagement model? Important. Work-life balance. Performance uh, measurements and metrics. You need to understand those things. Okay? Compensation packages. The kind is, again, communications is very, very important. Your um, enablement and capacity building continuously. Your office management, how does that look now that you want to go remote? Some of your enablers, you know, I say technology. It's important that we have technology, but technology is not your, your strategy. Technology is just the tools that are going to enable you to do these things. Digitalization. For year, we're going to cloud this, this. How is your data loss protection? What if the cloud, something happened? Well, do you have any fallback plan? Are you understanding what data protection is? Are you secure? Uh, cyber security is important. Uh, how are you dealing with your documents? It's important. 
also there are many other tools available reporting online timesheet tracking time there's even something called geofencing i can decide that only the employees in vi are going to collaborate on a certain project and nobody else can share it that's how technology is so granular so you have the opportunity to use technology to enable any strategy but first you need to know the strategy there's a brilliant group of um, companies, four of them, I think I mentioned them earlier, that did some awesome research just for Nigeria. And uh, a good friend of mine, Lyra, is, is, is one of uh, the people working uh, on this. And they interview over uh, 3,600 um, folks in, in uh, Lagos, in uh, Abuja, and, and in other states. And it's so amazing the things that came back. 68% identified the issues with electricity, working from home, right? 68% power technology, you know, increase in their cost. Also, uh, and this is just a talk to the survey we just did here, our uh, polling ourselves, you know, 40% of them require significant support to deal with those challenges. So as a business, you need to start to think about it in the Nigerian context. What does that mean for me? How do I do it? And so forth. Even with the, the saving of hours that some of, uh, some of the, the, the folks are going to save from commuting, what do they use it for? Apparently, they use it for work. They don't do mm -hmm. life, uh, uh, life work balance. They go right back to work. So... You know, again, just let us be mindful before we start to adapt these things. Now, my last slide, if we go to my last slide, um, I wanted to just really bring it home. Um, after this slide, the, 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 the four companies that you, if you're really, really wanting some advice and help, you can, you can look at as well. But Bringing it home, we have to understand remote working trends, it's just, it's just amazing, right? It's blowing our mind. But do you know something? 80% of employees that work from home are not happy if they don't have the work structure in place. They are not happy. 80% are not happy. Why 70% are happy, you know, most of it is high level, C-level people. Majority of your workforce, if, they, if your work that they're doing for you is putting more burden on them, productivity goes down, retention goes down, morale goes down. So be very super careful. So keep in mind that why am I moving my workforce remote? What am I trying to achieve? And how do I make it happen? And really, no one size fits all. And that's the truth. If the issue's own, you need to be very strategic about that technology. It's not your strategy. It will help you succeed in your execution, but it's not your strategy. And lastly, but not the least, a typical consultant will tell you, it all depends on factors that you need to identify and understand. So Digi, we're gonna to move to the, to the last so you can have something to take away if you're looking for local help. So local help is here. These four companies are available to help. They've put together a, a, a tremendous work in, in data. So they have a lot of data now, understanding the psychic behind work, work from home and can definitely help you if you are uh, looking to move forward on this joining. And so thank you very much. Um, Digi, next slide is Y Group Holdings. If you need me or my team to help you, we'll be happy as well. And we have different areas and I think you guys are going to share the slides. So please feel free to reach out. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Thank you very much, um, Fatumata. Thank you so much. Um, I think um, it's been a very um, informative session. Um, 
I'm sure people have questions. Um, some questions have been dropping. Um, but right now, we will um, go into um, the next part of the program and then come back to take questions um, in another five to 10 minutes. Um, so um, right now, I would like to invite um, um, our DC, Mr. Fola Guda, to take us um, on salvation and Holy Ghost baptism, um, where Christian Fellowship um, would like to bring people to Christ. And then once we do that, then we take the Q&A. So Mr. Fola Guda, please, um, over to you. Hello? Hello? Hello, Mr. Folaguda, are you there? Can we unmute him? Okay. Yes, he's unmuted. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a uh, powerful, powerful, powerful delivery that we have had. Um, it's awesome. And this is the kind of thing that we need to keep the body of our, of our entrepreneurs going in this time. And um, I, I, one thing I like to add is this. There's always a God factor to everything. When we consider the God factor in everything that we do, our productivity is going to tremendously increase. And we affect lives. Now, he, he talked so much about attitude. 10% of is, is what happened to you, and 90% is how you react, attitude. Now, people's attitudes are built on things that most of the times are not related to the workplace. This guy has an issue with his wife or with his spouse. And that, because he knows that he's going to get back home to his spouse in the evening and relationship is not normal, the entire time he spends in the office space is not, is not productive enough. But recent, recent news from, from um, China says that they are limiting the courts to the number of divorces they can do per day. Because what has happened since the lockdown is that the man finds himself at home with his wife, and all of a sudden there are quarrels, there are fights, and somebody wants a divorce. You can find out that this guy may be CEO of a company, and they're working hard. So what is man's life there for? Now, when a man is not connected to God, there's a chance that his productivity level will be very low. Why do we need to connect to God? God is the owner of remote working. I can imagine when God created, uh, my, 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 my discussion is based on the Bible, the Bible as the word of God. When God created, if you look at the church, note, note, note it and check when you get back in Genesis chapter one, Bible said God created the world. He called, he just spoke, let the trees come out. And you can imagine the millions of species of trees that came out in Africa, in Latin America, in China, in Asia, everywhere. One world produced that. How more remote can you get? At the point, in somewhere when the kings were ruling in Israel, there was a king, there was a Syr Syria was attacking Israel. And every time the Syria king puts up his strategy in his corner in his room, the strategy gets revealed to a, a prophet who is far away. And the king, and every time that strategy is leaked, the, the battle, the battle uh, uh, strategy is dissolved and nothing works. And so the king was curious, who is telling Israel, who amongst us is telling Israel what we're doing? And someone said, no, nobody, it's only the prophet there. How is the prophet able to know this? Because he was working with God. So if we walk with God, there's every chance that our productivity is going to increase because it says apart from him, we can do nothing. Now, there was a king also called Nebuchadnezzar. 
had uh, some, they has plunged, um, uh, uh, plummeted Israel, and all the boys were there in exile. And this man had a, he had a dream. And he woke up in the morning, he didn't even understand the dream. He couldn't recollect. And he told the wise men, tell me the dream and the interpretation. Nobody knew it. But there was a young man there and his team called Daniel. The next day, not the day, the same day that the king had his dream, this guy went to pray. And the next night, God revealed the entire dream to him. How is that possible? Because he was connected with God. So we need a connection to God in the workplace. Jesus said, come to me, all ye that labor. We go through all kinds of labor and we are heavy laden. He says, come, I'll give you rest. That's why tonight I, I'll give that opportunity for somebody to, to let God help you. At a point, I was a credit officer in the bank. And I was good at my work. We could do the crunching. We could balance, do the balance sheet analysis. But at the end of the evening, we end up drinking. And sometimes you drink and then you mess up. You get back, you get back home at about 3, 4 a.m. And you're supposed to be at work night at 8 a.m. and begin to do the analysis. Sometimes you get back and your head is dropping, it's, it's aching hard. You can't do anything productive. Nobody knew that you have wasted your time all night. But when that changed, I got a better productivity level. So tonight, it is possible that if you are not connected with God, it is not even possible, it is the truth that if you are not connected with God thoroughly, the chances are that your level will be low. But if you connect to him, how do we connect to God? He has come to give us life and it is free. Jesus, his son, came and died for us. And when he died for us, he gave us opportunity to know God and be integrated to the wisdom, the depth of wisdom that God had in the beginning. When God created all those animals, he called them to name them. So whatever name, it's and thousands and thousands of creatures, why is it hard to God? So God means that a lot can happen with us. So tonight, I'd like to give an opportunity to somebody who wants that done, wants to do that, who pray. Just raise your hand wherever you are. I'm going to pray with you. When God came into my life, things changed for me. And I can tell you, my productivity increased. I had my, my work life and work, work and life, uh, work life became quite well balanced. My attitude changed. And a lot, a lot of it. And people will point at me, what happened to you? I know what happened. I've allowed God to get into my life. Are you going to allow that to happen today as I pray? If you're doing that, you're raising your hand, just lay your right hand on your chest. I'm going to pray with you. You are going to ask that God will help you. Every man had the nature of sin. We acquired it when we were born. We didn't, it was not negotiable. But we have an opportunity, you have a choice to come out of it. And that's the choice you are making now. God, help me. I know I have a nature of sin, but now I've come to give my life to you so that I can be a better product producer out there. Help me. If you are doing that, I'm going to pray now. Lord, at the point I gave my life to you and my life changed. And if some people here have the same testimony. We're asking, Lord, that anyone whose hand is raised tonight to receive you as Lord and Savior, I ask that you will help them so that from now, changes will come to their life. And then the burden that they used to carry will become, will be handled of God, and then they will have lighter load to carry. Thank you, Lord, for this salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The other thing is, Amen. anyone who is born again has the power of the Holy Spirit is able to help you. From being timid, initially I, I was so timid, I couldn't get myself together. But now I'm up and running. There's boldness in me, not because I, have, I've drunk, I drank some rum, but because the power of God is at work in my life. So we Amen. can ask the Holy Spirit also to come into our lives and he will make a difference. All you need to do is ask him. If you are, if you are born again, 
you ask him to come into your life, Holy Spirit, help me to be a better person. And the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon your life. You find yourself doing things that you wish you could not do before. If you want that, I'm going to pray right now. It comes with the evidence of being able to speak in other tongues. You find yourself speaking. The Holy Spirit takes control of you. You are speaking in tongues other than your mother language or the languages that you have studied. And it energizes you. I begin to manifest some of the giftings of God. You pray with somebody and is healed. You have a word for somebody and all that. It's called word of knowledge of prophecy. Lord, thank you for anyone in the house tonight who wants to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, someone who is already born again. I ask, Lord, that your power will come upon such ones now. And Lord, you will release a grace mm -hmm. upon them to manifest speaking in other tongues as evidence of having been baptized. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for this time. I believe we, we, new strength is released to us now. We can go forth and manifest His grace. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Um, thank you so much, um, Mr. Folabuda. Um, um, right away, uh, we will be going into the Q&A. Uh, but please, if you made that decision <clears throat> to give your life to Christ, um, there's a form um, dropped on the chat group. Um, you can click the form and drop your details. We have additional information for you. I would like to speak to you and share some very valuable information um, that will help you um, to sustain that decision you've just made. Um, for the next, um, we're, we're, we've actually run out of time, um, but we can see that there are lots of questions. So we'll be quite brief about it. Um, I think we will take a maximum of five questions. Um, there are already one or two that I can see on the chat group which you've taken. Um, so the process we would follow is, if you have a question, please drop it in the chat group. Um, and um, I would read it out. And um, Mrs. Coker would um, give us a response on it. Um, I think the best thing is to read out all the questions quickly. Um, so that it's faster and um, we can come to the end of this meeting. Thank you so much for your time. Um, okay, so I have a question here. Um, somebody says, I'm an event planning and management consultant. Remote working will be applicable during the pre-event um, period, but not when you're running an event. Um, that, that, that's an answer thing. Um, I think this person is looking for clarification. I mean, because the person is basically trying to say, well, it doesn't really apply for event planning and management. Uh, well, I think for that, basically, it depends. Like she said, it depends. I mean, the, the circumstances are different. There's also a question here. Somebody says, how can someone in the building and construction industry make use of your proposals where various artisans have to work simultaneously? Okay. Um, another question. Considering the goal of early years education settings is to support the child's personal, social, and emotional development, what aspect of this type of learning can be done remotely? Okay. Um, okay. I, 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 think, I think that's about all. And I think we'll just take only those three questions and um, we, can, we can move to the next item. Um, join me to welcome um, Mrs. Koka to the microphone once again. Um, thank you very much, Mrs. Koka. Okay, so a microphone is mute. Then you cannot have right. a question. Yeah. Okay. Do you go ahead. Add a question. Yes. Yes, please add a question. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Th thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I just want to ask, how do you measure productivity? What's the yardstick of measuring productivity where the boss is not there? So in this case of working remotely, what is the effective way of measuring productivity? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Well, first, let me just, let me answer this question for, since it's right in front of me now. What I originally said was it's important for you to understand your workforce okay and you need to understand the strategy of leaving them as unsupervised as possible in the other term is you will have all of the technology that you can you can you have technology that can tell you when i log on and you can start you know by saying okay once you log on you're at work right 
or once you turn out on your computer, you are work, you could track me from there, but that does not mean I'm, produ I'm being productive, right? You can also track me if I am going from one end of VI to the other to, to the client site. You know, I can take the, the, the minutes and put it into the CRM. Uh, we know that a lot of garbage goes into CR, uh, CRM because people will try to uh, mask information just to get away with doing nothing. Um, you could also say, well, time in by the amount of calls you lock on, because when I was with IBM, we had a call center. So as, as you're on the call, um, that's when your productivity starts counting. But all of those things do not work if you don't have the right attitude, the right training, and the right people, because they will always find a way around those technologies, okay? It's important that you have those technologies in place and you, it's important that you have all the infrastructure in place. Also, projects, um, the project managers, they are very good at understanding the task when it's supposed to be completed, milestones and all. Again, as long as the person that is doing that task is not the right person, you will not get the results on your, your, your productivity. There are, I don't think there are any technology, there, there is any task you want to find on how to digitize it in, in our world today that you cannot find a technology to meet it. But the most important thing will be your people. If you don't have the right people, no amount of infrastructure that you put in play will do you any good because they'll find a way around it. If it's not 100%, maybe 50%, maybe 60%, but you will not be in the high numbers. And I'll give you one example real quickly. Working with uh, remote workers, understanding their needs, and then making sure that you align their needs with your accomplishments in your business is very, very crucial. If you don't do that, you will not get the, out the outcome that you need. The first thing I did in, in, in SSL, unfortunately, was to fire a lot of people. And it was mainly because prior to coming to the job, we did an extensive scrub of all of the people in the organization and where we wanted to take the organization. If it didn't fit it, we had to let you go because we had to retrain and, and have people with the right attitude to go where we wanted to go. So I, I, I hope I answered that question. On the, the school thing, my kids are old. Uh, I have a 20 year old, 19, you know, <laughs> but um, I, I think what, when it comes to children, I really believe that your time with your children is the best teaching you can give. Our kids are like sponges, they become us. If you are in the kitchen and your two year old is there with you, do not think that he or she doesn't understand what you're doing or is not, uh, is not trying to copy you. I worked from home, like I said, and my daughter, um, you know, became Miss, Miss Corporate. Um, at five years old, she was sitting in my office chair at home and get on the call and be like, so let's get the numbers going. You know, what are the, what's the budget looking like today? And she would read out the points that I will read out every Monday on my candidates calls. And so we as parents in this time of lockdown or any other time for that matter, have to make sure we are the first teachers of our children that learn from us, interact with your kids. Um, you know, it, it is true that, that charity begins at home. The first church is the home. What you teach your kids at home is most important. And I don't think putting a child at two, three, four, early learning in front of a computer for more than 30 minutes uh, is a good idea. Uh, just me as a parent. Um, and then for, did I miss anything else, Deji? Oh, for the, yeah, the, for the, the manufacturing, for no, the construction. Uh, construction. Yes, for the construction uh, mm -hmm. question, uh, it depends on what you're trying to, uh, you know, what you're trying to accomplish. Because for twos, as far as, you know, collaborations and, and so forth, we had, uh, you know, CADs. We have different tools out there. 
that a lot of collaboration can be going on without physically being somewhere uh, in a space. Say, for example, if you needed to put some crowd moving or so, or so forth out. Now, it all depends on what your company is willing to invest in their assistance to, to make that work. As we know that most of our folks are not, um, you know, computer literate. So where are you taking, what, what's, the, what's the strategy for, for, for the future? Is it something that you think that will basically give you an edge? Um, it will you know, help you differentiate in the industry. It will make your product more expensive. I mean, I don't know. You just have to really think through uh, what is it that you're trying to accomplish and what will require, what kind of investments uh, it might require for you to be able to obtain it. Thank you very much, everyone. Hello. Oh, sorry, my mic was off. Um, thank you so much, Fatimata. We we sincerely appreciate the time um, you've spent, um, especially on on um, very very short notice. Um, we appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Um, I think um, if we don't have um, further questions. Um, we would just like to say a very big thank you to you. Um, and I'll move to the next item um, because of okay. our time. Okay. Thank um, you, Unless everyone. you have any closing remarks to say to us, otherwise I'll just, I'll just move on. Okay. Okay, so I'm moving on. All right, the next item um, is um, the Kingdom Investment and I'll call on Mr. Anide, um to take us on that. Um, very, very quickly. Um, Kingdom Sorry, we have Mr. Mike Kadegu, um, the National Director. Okay. Mr. Mike Adegu is the okay. National Director in the okay. House to help okay. us take offering and Kingdom investment. All right, uh, Mr. Mike Adegu, um, you are welcome. Um, Can you please unmute him if he's there? He's there, please. Okay. Can you unmute him, please? Um, okay. His mic is muted. Okay, I've unmuted him. Hello. Hello, good evening, sir. Hello, good sir. evening. How are you? Very well, thank you. You're welcome. Such a great pleasure. Yeah, if you enable my video too, that it will show such um, a great pleasure to be part of this great meeting. And um, there's nothing as beautiful as coming together as children of the living God. And that's why when God gives us this opportunity at any point in time, uh, we don't miss it to say thank you back to the Almighty. And that's exactly what you're going to do this evening, to appreciate him for the gift of, to appreciate him for all that he's doing in our lives, to appreciate him that despite every attempt of the enemy to silence us, to keep, us away from meeting, we are doing much, much more than even when we're meeting physically. This God is faithful. Hallelujah. Do we want to this faithful God? I think it's an opportunity that we have this evening to be faithful to this faithful God. And I'm sure giving an offering to the Almighty God, giving and investing in the kingdom is what we must all do. And I just want to challenge each and every one of us to think of something good, just in appreciation, and whatever you invest in the kingdom definitely starts coming back in multiples. I want to encourage us to sow into the kingdom and ask the Lord bless us. I'm sure the account details will be displayed now. 
And uh, as you note down, I'll expect you to make your own offering and then let's pray together. Okay. Um, in addition to what um, Mr. Degun has said, um, if you look on the screen, we have the um, fellowship bank account. And then if you need to make a card payment uh, or other channels, USSD, there's a link that we have provided on the chat group. Um, you can also use that link um, to facilitate your payment to our bank account. Thank you. Shall we pray? Father, we just want to thank you for this privilege to invest in your kingdom once again. The testimony we have is that each time we have this opportunity and we use it, you have always blessed us back. This one will not be an exception. Therefore, Lord, God, let testimonies roll in after this meeting. Your name shall be glorified. Amen. Thank you for answered prayers. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Um, we've come to the end of the meeting. Um, we're rounding off. So um, I would like to call on um, Mr. Diola Ulusudo. is the president of this chapter. He will take us... Um, on the voice recognition, uh, voice um, and recognition of leaders, and then we close because um, we are privileged to have a lot of our leaders in the meeting this evening. Uh, Mr. Olusudo, um, over to you, please. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, um, uh, DG. Before I do that, I would like to uh, recognize um, those who are members who would love to be uh, part of the join the full gospel. Uh, those who are members today, especially those who are attending for the first time. I'm sure we'll get your details uh, from the registration forms. But if you're here and today is your first time of attending the meetings, uh, it would be nice for you to indicate with a show of hand uh, so that we can um, recognize you. Um, just, um, I'm sure we will not take much time. Uh, please indicate with a show of hand if today is your first time of attending a meeting of any full gospel meeting. We'd like to recognize you as special guests tonight. Is there anyone are uh, here, um, still here among those of us yes, who are their still hands here. raised. Um, their hands raised. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, now for those, okay, I can see a lot of hands. I can see, I can see a lot of hands. Um, um, please, um, I would like you to please go to the I'm sure there'll be a link uh, on the chat group. Uh, please yes. give us your details. I can see the details here, but for those who have whose phone do not show their names, we may not be able to see your name. But let me thank you for coming. You are our special guest tonight. Uh, I want to say that um, we are glad to have you. We will surely send you some materials and information, more information about the group. Thank you for being part of this meeting. We meet like this um, twice in a month. First uh, Wednesday of the month, the prayer and fast meeting for us, uh, where we all come together to pray for our families and our businesses. And then we have seminars like this where we share knowledge and we add value to ourselves and to our businesses and we fellowship together. I thank you each. I want to thank each and every one of you to be here. You can put your hands down. And for those of you who are here who would like to be a member of this fellowship, you want to join us, you want to be a part of us. Um, I would like to say that the criteria is very simple. Number one is that you must be a born again child of God. Uh, you must be a child of God, and I'm sure we have given opportunity tonight for those who would like to uh, give their lives to Christ. Number two, you must uh, believe in the Holy Ghost and must have received or desire uh, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That is number two criteria. And then number three is the fact that you must be gainfully employed. It's not a fellowship for students. Uh, you must be gainfully employed because in the full gospel, we serve God with our money. Uh, that's what we do. We serve God with our money, which is evident by what we have done tonight. We are not, um, we are an interdenominational fellowship. We don't receive subvention from government or from anyone. So what we do is purely by donation of members. And so we serve God with our money. And finally, uh, you must pay our yearly dues. Uh, our yearly dues is very simple. Uh, it's 1,000 Naira per annum for men and 500 Naira uh, for ladies. Uh, you can see that it's very, uh, ex very expensive, if I can use that term. And so those are the criteria. But if you'd like to be a member tonight, I'd like you to signify also uh, so that we can send our form uh, to you, uh, to the chat group, and you can fill it. Please, can you signify 
if you have met those criteria and you like us to, uh, you like to be a member of the fellowship tonight, uh, please can you signify wherever you are so that we can also recognize you. Um, is there anyone who would like to join us tonight? If you have enjoyed what you heard tonight and you want to be a part of us, I would like to give you an opportunity to be a part of the fellowship. Is there anyone? I can see several hands. Thank you. I can see several hands. Um, any other person? Please go to the chat group. I'm sure they'll send you a form there yeah, where we can form. capture. Thank you. I can see comments. There's a yes. form there. So where we can capture, yeah, where you can, we can give us our details. Thank you so much. Uh, before we go tonight, please permit me to also uh, recognize uh, our leaders and national directors of the fellowship who are here with us tonight. Um, I have Mr. Mike Adegu, who just took the offering, the national director and international director for that matter. I have Mr. I.K. Obazi, uh, who is also a national director. Mr. Sheyulu Baba is here with us. Uh, Mr. Akinolu Ole, also a national director. Uh, Mr. Ebere Wadoka, national director. Mr. Femi Falae is here with us, national director. Mr. Fola Aguda, uh, DC, whose birthday is today. Um, um, it's, it's, it's a special day for us. Uh, this is happy birthday, and his and his wife, Mrs. Tukwe Aguda, is also here with us. Uh, Mr. Abiola Ayeni is here, a national director. Uh, we also have um, uh, I, I see Mrs. Dele Olufon, so I want to believe that Barrister Wale Olufon, uh, international director, is also here with us. Uh, I see Mr. Charles, uh, Engineer Charles Aladi Walu, uh, an international director, and his wife, uh, Dr. Mrs. Aladi Walu, also are here with us. We also have other field reps and national president um, chapter presidents who are here with us tonight. So I want to thank each and every one of you. But before I go, please permit me also to recognize those who are here, uh, who are uh, attending this meeting from overseas. Please, can you signify? At least I can see Mr. Kiyoshinubi uh, from the US. I see Femiolo from Canada, John Kuma from Canada to Yinka Oketiku from UK. I see. Wandema Jacob Dumi also, I think, uh, from UK or, or America. I don't know where you are. Uh, Mrs. Um, Bosede K, thank you. Adik I see your hand too. Um, I see Mr. Tunde Dokwemu from the UK. Uh, Tunde Akonde from the UK too. Uh, so there are several hands. Mr. Fumilayo Ajayi also uh, from the UK. So we have several of them who are uh, attending from overseas. And some have become members of the fellowship. They have been attending all our meetings that we have had virtually. We want to thank you for being a part of the fellowship, please uh, make sure that you fill registration form so that we can uh, detail so that we can also reach out to you. I also have people from Abuja here um, and other locations. God bless you and thank you for coming tonight. Indeed, it has been a very educative and enlightening meeting. There's Fatima Law. I don't know who that is, but you're welcome for being a part of this meeting. Uh, and I believe that this is just one of the several meetings that we will have. Um, I can see people here tonight who I know that we will call upon uh, to also come and share with us. Uh, we have the treasurer of the Bank of Industry here with us tonight. And I know the federal government is giving out a lot of um, uh, incentives to businesses. So we'll call on you to come and share with us. Uh, you know, so we have several other people like that. So we will we'll leverage on the, the, you know, the network that we have here tonight and we will call on Ooh. others to share with us. But I also to thank Fatumata. She did an excellent Ooh. job. And then I've seen the comments uh, on the chat group. Excellent job. Thank you so much. God bless you. And I believe that uh, you have been a blessing to us. Uh, finally, um, let me call on one of the national directors uh, to give us uh, the closing prayer so that um, they can also, he can also pray for Fatumata and then he'll pray for us. Permit me to call on Mr. Ikumosa Obazi, uh, a national director of the Food Gospel, uh, to pray for us tonight. Mr. Obazi, please. Can we unmute you, please? He's been unmuted. Okay. Uh, he needs to unmute his mic. Mr. Okay. Obazi, please can you unmute your mic? Praise that the Lord. Father, hallelujah. Father, we want, to thank, we want to thank you for what you have done tonight. We appreciate the information you have sent our way. We also appreciate the grace that you have released upon all of us. We know, Lord, that uh, it is in your will. And your word says that you take, you take delight in the prosperity of yourself. 
we want to salute you because what we have learned today and the grace you have released upon us will lead to our greater prosperity in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your daughter that you have prepared, Amen. that you have used as a vessel, we want to lead, we want to commit her afresh into your hands, that you will enlarge her hope and that you will do greater things and much more able to her life, her work, and her ministry. <clears throat> Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for release and spread your glory in the nations of the earth. Thank Amen. you, our King and our Maker. For in Jesus' Amen. precious name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Before before we go tonight, please permit me to recognize Dr. Falope, our international director, all the way from Katina. Um, is here with us tonight. Uh, we also have uh, other members. Mr. I hope I mentioned Mr. Biola uh, Yes, you did. And yes, then you did. I also have um, from the UK here is uh, Mrs. Victoria Okwe, uh, Ambassador Afola, Afola Shadi Okwe, and uh, Elizabeth Okusaga. They are also from the UK. Um, please don't just go away. We'd like us to also stay behind and be able to interact. We will, we will, I believe we will share the slides uh, for those of us who are here tonight. So let's have your details. So we'll share the materials uh, with uh, everyone that has been a part of this meeting. Uh, MC, thank you. All right. Thank you. Can very we much. have the closing? Yes, sir. Um, you. Sorry. All right. So um, we'll take the closing, um, the fellowship anthem, and we close the meeting. Okay. Thank you, sir. We have the Thank you so much, everybody. It's been great having you. I believe um, technology, we have that uh, music uh, usually played, but I believe there's been some network issues. But we want to thank you once again for coming. It's been great having every one of us on this meeting. I can see uh, Dr. Falope. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, God bless you, sir, for the comment. It's, it's a privilege, and we are honored to have you at this meeting tonight. Thank you so much, sir. And to all the national directors and all the leaders once again, and all the guests, our guests and members of this meeting, thank you so much. We are honored to have you at this meeting. Uh, friends from overseas, thank you for being a part of the meeting. I uh, believe that um, you are, we are one big family. Thank you for adding color to the meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, once again. Uh, every member who has made possible, we appreciate you. Uh, we thank you. Our next meeting, we will also send the notices uh, to each and every one of us. God bless you, and thank you for being a part of this meeting once again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Fatumata. Thank you so much.
this. Okay, I'll be done on us
Thank you. 